On the windswept western slopes of the Pennine stands the Baptist church at shore. Founded in the year 1777, it was erected for the purpose of preaching the gospel and the teaching of youth in all branches of learning. Its congregation was composed mainly of farmers and handloom weavers living on the hilltops. Since the beginning, the premises have twice been enlarged as the valley became a scene of great industrial activity. Today, 195 years on, the scene has changed. Ages of time have taken their toll, making the church building unusable. The adjoining school premises have now to serve for all activities. But there still remains a faithful band of followers who jealously guard their heritage, and the Christian work continues with undiminished zeal. Our story, a church year at shore, now begins. of the prizes, when there was a long table, pile after pile of books, and they used to start with the oldest, and we younger ones thought our turn was never coming. Well, they're very happy memories, but although we hadn't very many books, 
this morning is quite as important to these boys and girls as it was to us. At those services, the uh, secretary used to give his statistics, the very vital statistics of attendance morning and afternoon. The attendances in summer were rather poor, but we thought, well, when the winter weather comes, we shall get more back. But that didn't happen. And one particular Sunday morning, Dorothy and I looked at each other and we said, is it worth carrying on? Well, the following Sunday, Mrs. Dobson arrived with Mark and Julie, and she will never know the happiness that those two little children brought. We thought, yes, although we aren't many, we must still carry on and do what we can, because we do feel that whatever we're trying to do will be at last make a lasting impression upon them. Let us sing for our closing hymn, a blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. We now approach the festive season and on Sunday the 19th of December we hold our carol service where gifts for the sick and needy are laid at the foot of the Christmas tree. Youngest first make their contribution.
Christmas passes and spring is just around the corner. On a beautiful spring evening, the 16th of May, an excursion is made to Cliff Castle in Keithley.
sure you made it. Yes. No, no, no. no, no. Later this same evening, a hot supper is enjoyed at this quaint old English guest house. They used to have whist drives for boys at Hollywood. <laughs> and Mrs. Marshall, Edith Marshall's yes, mother, yes. used to make these pea pies. Mm -hmm. What is the name beside peas? Nothing on the peas, no, in pastry, no, just no, like no, a, a meat no, pie. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> The weeks that followed were destined to be very unsettled.
please for uh, a couple of minutes only. I don't know how many of you are aware of the fact, but one of our number, I'm referring to Mr. James Edward Greenwood, he makes 80 years old, I believe on the 1st of August. If you don't know who James Edward Greenwood is, better known to us as Teddy. I don't know exactly how many years Teddy has been a member of the choir, but I don't think I'm exaggerating if I say 70 years he's been a member of Shaw Choir. I'm sure, but I think it's a wonderful achievement to have been attending Shaw Choir for 70 years. And we, the choir, thought we couldn't let an occasion like this pass without showing our appreciation and our thanks for all the service that he has given to us here. And so, Teddy? Take a bow. <laughs> It gives me great pleasure, Teddy, to present this little gift to you. It comes with our love and affection and the thanks for many, many years' service. Well, thanks very much. This is unexpected. I knew that. <laughs> I knew that. But I'm very glad to be able to serve as long as I could. Yes, thanks very much. Another chapter has been written, another page turned, and as the golden glow of autumn descends, our little story passes into history. salute these worthy people of shore, for they have kept to light the flame that was kindled almost two hundred years ago. We cherish the young. In them lay our hope for their future.